it's a full room. You guys are very lucky because you're the lucky few that made it in there for what I think is going to be the best Q and A of the show. Because I'm most of them. So once again, everybody, I am Mark Walters, I'm the event manager of the Sci-Fi Expo. Thank you so much for coming out to the show. And I'm trying not to tear up because I've gotten a chance to host some really cool q and in my lifetime. Turn that damn phone off right now. <laughs> Whose phone is that? Turn that phone off. I'm sorry. I was a little nervous. Uh, I'm a huge, huge Back to the Future fan. I don't know about you guys. And it's not often that you get not one, not two, not three, but four, four <laughs> actors from the Back to the Future movies. Yeah, all in one place at one time. And so I'm very, very excited to introduce them to this stage, especially with our new Merv Griffin set. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Christopher Lloyd. about Back to the Future? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for coming out to the show. It really does mean a lot to have you all here. And uh, I guess this is uh, probably one of the rare opportunities to get you all back together again, uh, you know, outside of maybe like a, a big press junket or something for like a DVD. Uh, is it hard to believe it's already been, what, 27 years now? Or 28 years, I guess, going on 28 years since that movie came out, it's, it seems kind of odd. Because I it feels like I just saw it 10 years ago. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> You're a man of few words, Chris, but when you when you do talk, it resonates. It's always amazing to look out and see a bunch of people, like half the audience that wasn't even born when we made the movie. <laughs> it's quite amazing and wonderful. I'm curious, like by a show of hands, how many people actually saw it in the theater when it came out? So about half of you guys. About half of you guys. Okay. That's, that's pretty amazing. So, I, real, real kind of quickly, because I mean, this has obviously been covered in other formats, but like in two sentences or less, how did you each get involved in the original movie, Back to the Future? Um, I was in Mexico doing a little film, and I got work with my agent. Bob Sebeckis, who I've never heard of before, and I was very resistant because I got it off to do a play back, in, uh, back east, and I thought that's what I should do, that's what I, my roots are, I ought to go back and do it. And I actually uh, took the script, just sort of dumped it in the place with a basket, <laughs> and a friend of that was with me said, you know, one of your Mottos is that you never leave a stone unturned, which is true as far as trying to get work. And I thought, well, maybe I'll. I checked it out, and I still wasn't enthusiastic. But I went back, and I met Bob Sebeckis, and I was sold. And that was that. I was um, at the same time. I was offered a chorus line uh, to be in that and uh, Back to the Future, and. I turned down course line and they said, don't you want to be a piece of history? <laughs> and I was. <laughs> well, in my case, I, uh, I have always been a New York actor. And I said, as a New York actor, I'm never going to Hollywood until somebody sends for me. And then I got, I was doing a play on Broadway and I got this call from Robert Zemeckis to the Back to the Future, and of course, I know who he was at the time. So I said, okay, this is my chance to go out to Hollywood. 
and I did, and I spent about 10 or more years out there having a great time, and that's how I got involved in Back to the Future. I screen tested for Gremlins, Goomies, and Young Sherlock Holmes, which was all the same casting directors and producers. So I went in for Back to the Future, and I just said, hey, it's me again. And I had one audition, and I got that one. <laughs> Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this if you know anything about Back to the Future trivia, but I just find it endlessly fascinating that they shot almost the entire movie with Eric Stoltz and then ended up going and deciding to go with Michael J. Fox. So, did you all have to shoot scenes with Eric and then reshoot all those scenes with Michael, or was it just like a select few of you guys? Um, I don't know about anybody else, particularly, it wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was shocked. I mean, it happened. We were shooting those initial those scenes in the industrial city industry that were all night in the parking lot when the bad guys were shooting. You know, and, and, um, I, and I thought, and, and was like lunch was 1 a.m. in the morning, and we were all asked to gather around, and the suits were there. Spielberg and other people have made this announcement that Eric Stoltz was no longer going to be with us, and Michael was going to take over. Uh, all I can think of is how am I ever, ever going to repeat myself and uh, make it work, but it worked out. <laughs> I had already done a movie with Eric Stoltz, and I did a movie afterwards with Eric Stoltz. Do you all know what that movie is? The Wildlife and Some Kind of Wonderful. Yeah, so sandwiched in between was, was Back to the Future. So I was in Europe, and I got, I wasn't supposed to be in Europe. I was visiting my boyfriend, and I called my phone machine. Remember those? <laughs> and it was like, Beep. Steven Spielberg calling. Beep. Bob Zemeckis calling. Bob Gale. And I was like, oh, Sorry, I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. Too. Yes, uh, actually, I did uh, do a couple of scenes with Eric Stoltz, and then they shut down, and then they rewrote everything, and uh, everything, I never had to redo those scenes. It was all something new, so it was no problem for me. So you never called him a slacker? <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I got the part. Um, and then we did boyfriend-girlfriend pictures with Eric Stoltz. And he used to call me at home and call me Jennifer. And my mom always thought it was for my sister, because my sister's name is Jennifer. And she'd be like, no, Jennifer's not home. Then a series that I'd done, I'd done a pilot the previous spring, and it got picked up for a series. And they wouldn't let me go, so I had to back out and not be Jennifer in Back to the Future. Then my series went for eight episodes, and none of my shows went for longer than eight episodes. So. After that, um, my part had been recast, Eric was let go, the new girl was too tall for Michael, and I got my part back. <laughs> so, out of those scenes that you shot for the original film, what would you say was the most challenging or maybe the most difficult of the scenes? I mean, Chris, obviously you had to deal with a lot of, not just technical aspects, but special effects and things like that, but what was maybe like the most difficult from your memory of, of those scenes you got to shoot? Uh, well, on that line, in Back to Future 3, they, I, uh, Doc Brown built this enormous machine with all kinds of steam coming out, gears moving, all that. And at the very end of it, a little spout released a cube of ice. Uh, <laughs> I invented this machine for ice in the wild in the hot west. And I remember we shot it over and over and over and over again because there were so many technical things going on during the scene that it was always something that went wrong. And it would have to be reshot again. And I finally, all the technical stuff worked perfectly. And I blew my lines. <laughs> so we did it again. <laughs> so that's, I remember that. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> I just 
just remember when I had to kiss uh, Michael Fox in the car when I oh. said it's like kissing my brother. <laughs> it was really pivotal to, to Bob Zemeckis because everything hinged on the audience believing that I went from this super, like, horny girl. I, I had to, like, sell both things that I was madly in love with him and then with a one kiss. And they were, like, freaked out about how to shoot it. They, they couldn't, it just, like, took all my. So that was the hardest one. I had to kiss Michael Fox over and over again. <laughs> I don't remember anything being any more difficult, uh, than, other than acting is rather difficult in itself, but no special, uh, no special problems in my particular case. <laughs> Scary for me. <laughs> Going back in time wasn't scary. Forward in time. Sorry. All right. I know you guys have a lot of questions, and we have a, a line, two different lines of people. So we'll start here, and then we'll go here, and we'll take as many of these as we can. Let's start with you right over here, sir. Please speak up. Before you became a famous actor, what your first job, and/or what your uh, most favorite job was uh, before you became an actor? Before we... I was a ballet dancer. That was a lot harder than being an actor. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> What's the second part? Didn't you work for a taxi company? <laughs> and I did a lot of work before that. Wow. All over. Yeah. Um, mine was uh, being a babysitter, but it wasn't hard. I loved it. I was the uh, most popular babysitter in the neighborhood. Starting when I was seven. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go over here. All right, uh, first off, I don't think I'm alone in this room when I say this, but I would not be the same person I am today without Back to the Future, so live in a time where, where nothing is sacred, everything is being remade, but Back to the Future seems like the film that nobody wants to touch, it's a sacred movie, as it should be, but if they did that, how would you guys feel about that, if they remade it? How would you feel if it was remade today? Well, he could still be in it. <laughs> Find out that it's going to develop into the trilogy that 
that it became. When did you find out that it was going to be developed into a trilogy that it ended up becoming? Well, it was really weird because they didn't ask us to sign up for sequels, so our agents were all pretty excited when they called because we hadn't made deals yet. It, it was after the success of Back to the Future when it became evident that they wanted to do two and three, was, but only after its, uh, its major success. Yeah, we were, we were just hoping we'd get through the premiere opening of the Back to the Future 1 and that it would, you know, go somewhere. Yeah. And that was before the whole sequel machine had really kicked in, too, so it was kind of unusual to see sequels going to make. Go right over here. Hello. Um, you all created some pretty iconic characters. How much freedom did you have to create them? How much did you bring to the table, and how much was uh, in the script? How much did you bring to your own character, and how much was in the script ahead of time? Well, I, I, uh, um... <laughs> may, I, may I say that everything was in the script, and once, and in and, and bringing ourselves to what was in the script. It was a combination of those things, but basically, I feel it was the writing and then the experience that we brought to that. And the uh, genius casting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we stayed really true to the lines. I mean, the lines were pretty sacred in this movie because they were so well designed. But I, I know that, you know, we each worked very, very hard to make the characters rounder and funnier and as vivid as we could. True. <laughs> I pretty much played myself. Jennifer was written so much like who I was at the time that um, just saying the words of being myself was how it worked for me. I remember in the original screen tests, uh, and particularly for you two, when your makeup was considerably different in the original screen test than what it ended up being in the final film. How many variations did that go through before you, like, when the, before you found the the Doc Brown look and and Lorraine's final ultimate look for the film? I don't know. I know it probably fussed around from a lot of makeup uh, um, experimentation and, and having, having getting on camera and having them see you on camera and how it looked. Um, yeah. Well, I had so many different looks. It was really, it was like the dream, greatest part of all time. So, I don't know. Not a good question. Sorry. <laughs> and it can't all be winners. A forgettable moment for you in the Back to the Future series. Like watching it, whether you were a part of it or not. Oh. <laughs> I, can, I can answer it for you. Um, for me, uh, I think it was. Uh, after it had been out for a while, and I, I stood in the back of the Cinerama Dome, which was a really cool theater in LA, and uh, the, the, the audience, it was packed, and I stood there watching it in the back with my boyfriend and watched everybody laugh, and I don't know, it just was magic. It was really magic. I, I didn't know that this would happen after 27 years or whatever, and, uh, but the movie worked, and it was just beautiful. I remember, um, uh, who's the, the guy who wrote it? No, the music. Oh, uh, Alan Sylvester. No. Louis uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lewis. Louis Lewis. No, Louis Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many of us, but we went up to San Francisco or north of San Francisco to for an all night shoot for the video, for the music video. And Huey he, he Lewis was, they just before Back to the Future came out. And, um, you know, it was a gig for him. And, and what a great well, music. We were up there to record it and film the, the music video or whatever. And I, I remember he would, we were sitting around, whoever else was there. Huey Lewis, we were all night. And he kind of ambled over to us. And he kind of looked at us and he said, he said is this going to do anything? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I just looked back to that moment where he thought, it's a perfect answer question to ask. Is this film going? Is this going to do anything? 
nothing very funny about that. <laughs> but it is an HBO. <laughs> an unforgettable moment. Well, no, I just I kind of have a favorite moment when uh, after having done the, the first movie, when Bob Gale came up and said we're going to do part two and three, would you like to be part of it? And that's uh, that's the moment I remember very nicely. I remember um, when we were watching at the premiere of the first film, and well, I'll backtrack. The AD came up to me while we were filming and said, "Copy this." on a piece of paper and I just wrote whatever it was what was written there. And then in the film, my personal handwriting filled up the whole screen of what I wrote on the back of the clock tower flyer. And that just that was more exciting to me than my face, words, it was my handwriting on a screen. That was mine. I remember <laughs> um, when the Back to Future 2 premiered it premiered in London. And it was a benefit, and a uh, lady died. Wow. Uh, came to it, and we all stood in the line and shook her hand, and and, you know, <laughs> and Michael J. Fox couldn't make it, and I was bumped up, <laughs> and so I was to sit next to her during the performance, and I remember. Uh, she came out, whatever, and she were kind of a, a low balcony and a trumpet, you know, beautiful uh, costume, medieval costume guy, uh, all the trumpets, boy, the fanfare, uh, introducing her, and she came and sat down, and I sat down next to her, and, I, and she, she was an attractive woman. And, uh, and I, I'm thinking this is a little bit unreal. And she, she's very poised. And once in a while, she asked me a, a, some little question. Her biggest laugh during the whole show was when um, uh, the bad guy, uh, Biff, uh, is chasing Michael. And Biff is, I think, is in, a, in a con his convertible with his, with his with top down with his gang, and he he. Crashes into a, a, uh, a, a, a manure truck. A manure comes falling out, out buries them, and she outright laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, here's the, the princess or whatever. Uh, let go of a very crude woman. <laughs> That was pretty much the best they got. <laughs> the flying cars, it's not happening. And they keep putting it in movies. They keep saying it's going to happen, and it never happens. Well, um, what's the company that you use? Nike. Oh, I Thank you. Know. Thank you. <laughs> Nike has come up with a sticker that sort of ties itself. Yeah, just like the power so that, That's where science is caught with. <laughs> but I think they did that only because of Back to the Future, because they were, you know, they thought they'd get to there, but they never did. The rehydrating pizza, not so much. <laughs> I was going to say what Chris said, so I have nothing to say now. <laughs> By the way, we still have two years for those hoverboards, though. And uh, I have a movie.
movie called The Trouble with the Truth, which is coming on TV soon. And uh, I think that's it right now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting ready to do a play in New York, which is kind of scary, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Caucasian chalk circle. <laughs> Greg, right? Yeah. Greg, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, for me, what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm enjoying life. I'm shoveling snow up in the Adirondacks and bringing in the wood and meeting good in front of the fireplace and feeling very grateful for all of it.